So we learn beginning of Kiddushin. We should nicknes be Kesef. And Kesef we learn out Kicho Kicho Mr. Ephron. We learn it out through the derivation from the acquisition of Moritz Hamach Pelo. So we explained already in the previous year the inner connection between the highest level of the home to be established amongst Am Yisrael, which is the example of Abraham and Sohei, the founders of the nation. And the type of extremes that Abraham Avinu went to have the right burial place for his soul and life partner was demonstrated by his acquisition with great difficulty of taking over a place which should be called his. He introduced it and as the sages explain, I'm a stranger and I am a full citizen with you. He said like this, as far as you're concerned, I'm a stranger. You, the Chittites, the Knanites, have been in possession of this land for some generations. Now I'm coming here with my small clan. So I'm like a stranger, and that's why my attitude to you is to use every means possible to retain your friendship. But what happens if you're not going to accept it? I'm, I'm willing to go to great extremes, to pay an enormous price for a piece of land. I want to do it in a way that you should be pleased, but I'm still a stranger. But the truth is, and if not, I'm a Toshav. Because my God has already said, who's the God of all of you as well, has already said, I'm giving you this land. But in practice, it hasn't reached that stage yet. And therefore, I'm asking it in this manner. And Boch Hashem, he managed to achieve it. One of the questions which is raised about this is, yeah, this same approach was adopted later as well. When Hebron was already purchased by Abraham Avinu, with full agreement at the time. And there was another place also, which was purchased before the people as a nation came into the land, which is the other place, which was purchased by our forefathers before they went into came to Kalan Shechem. 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 Purchased by, by um, Yaakov Avinu. No, and that's where Yosef was, he, he purchased all, Meir Kasita. He describes the amount, just like Avram Avinu. Because they recognized, you know, we've got to try and achieve it in a peaceful manner. And also there's a third place, which when they did conquer the land, take it over, but they refused to conquer. And it was also purchased from the Yewusi, from Arva, Arona, Arona, Yewusi, which was that? Yerushalayim, by the That was the Harabai, the Temple Mount. So, the question is, these three places are the most holy places of the people of Israel. And these three places were not taken in conquest. They were purchased with a full price. The greatest one is Harabite. Something squeaky. Can you change when you stand? I think it's broken. It's the chair. Chair. The chair. Something squeaky. Is, it concerns me. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
be up to date on our shia. A very important lesson to learn from here. <clears throat> and that is, we know as we explained already, the foundation of Am Yisrael is building up the home, the individual home, which is the unit of the nation. But the national home of the nation, the basis, is Yerushalayim. It's the capital of our national home. And the Harabite is the most holy place. So Hashem is telling us here that, in fact, there's an explanation in the Rambam. The Rambam says, the first conquest was through power. And therefore, when the power went away, when the Babylonians came and they destroyed the power of the people of Israel, and in its place there came the Babylonian power, so the holiness of the land of Israel left. But Yerushalayim, he says, Yerushalayim, its holiness reigns forever. Because it was never taken by power. It was purchased. There was holiness remains for all time. So it's different to the rest of Eretz Israel. <laughs> so we see, what to know. Why wasn't David HaMelech allowed to build the Beit HaMikdash? Because he'd killed people. Although he killed them in self-defense, he killed them in the commandment of Hashem. But still, Shlomo HaMelech never was involved in killing. Therefore, he could really build the Beit HaMikdash. Why am I saying this? Because we know that <coughs> all the Gedoyle HaPoskim, who are the real Sanhedrin in our time, they own, it's not the real Sanhedrin, but it's in place of the real Sanhedrin, they all made a decision that Jews should not go onto the Harabite, on Temple Mount, unless it's necessary for self-defense. Otherwise they shouldn't go. Because they might even if they go to certain places on the Temple Mount, they're not, not even there's certain doubts as well, doubtful places. The Chayv Korot. But we know there is a group known as the Faithful Ones of Harabais, and one of their leaders just announced last week at a conference in the Begin Memorial House that we have to take hold of the rabbi. And he, he was also one of the faithful ones of the rabbi who go up the mountains <coughs> to say some prayers because they say, well, if, if the Muslims can pray there, why can't we pray there? But there's a reason. A piyalocha. And not only a piyalocha, because the Kodesh Baruch Hu gives the Yad Dishmaya. But from the point of view of not going beyond the basis of trying to, as much as possible, even with the Muslim world, and certainly with the whole of the Western world, to try to work things out in a peaceful manner, as far as we can. And since uh, even some of the Chavari Knesset joined the Neymar Nehar Abayat and went, went on the mountain, that provokes the other side. Well, the other side, they do harm us in any case. But when he came out from there, Unfortunately, he was injured, and we hope we'll all have a full shleima. But maybe this is a lesson. Akkadish Borak is showing us something. He's showing us that the only way we can hope also to survive here in Eretz Israel is we follow the way of the Torah and we follow the Gedoyla Torah. And when the politicians, and very frequently it is so, the leaders of the politicians, they do consult with the rabbis. And they, even if they've got strong right-wing tendencies, but there's a limit. One of the limits is not to go on that abide, according to the detail, unless it's really necessary for protection. Yeah, but these so this is a very important about... lesson from the past of the week. Because it's also the past of the week. We'll go a bit further. There's another aspect. From Pasha of the Week deals specifically with the future of the Muslim empires. 
And Ishmael was promised many things. Because they are Kizarachahu. He's still your seed. And even when Ishmael, I am a tzachik. So, he had tendencies to be violent with Yitzchok. It would appear that he was still regarded as a tzaddik. In other words, he hadn't come out yet. Sorrow saw it in him, and therefore she went and said to Avram, if you want to build up the covenant of Avram, our home has got to be a home based upon the love of Hashem. Also the love of man, which is very important. But there's a limit. She said, Chesed, the Chesed of Avram is indeed very great. And the Chesed of Avram he felt very much is my son. Nevertheless, and maybe he'll become part of the future people of Hashem. And we've got to educate in that direction. But she saw as she'd been more together with Hogar, and together also, obviously, with her son. She saw that the rebellion that took place before, which was stopped by the Malachim, by the angels in last week's Pasha, the spirit of rebellion was still there. And in fact, the simple explanation, if you, if you read the Psukim in next week's Pasha, was that when Yitzchak was born in the end, which is a great miracle, and when they had the festival of weaning, and they invited people to come. So, at that time, this is a simple Peshat. Yishmuel stood aside and he mocked it. He transformed the Yitzchak to Metzachek. He mocked it. He made fun of it. He said, why? Because I'm obviously the firstborn. I'm the one who's going to inherit everything of Avram Avinu. We're just waiting to, you know, Avram saw no longer there. Hagar will be at the head of everything. She was the wife of, surviving wife of Avram, and I'm the son. I'm taking over, and Yitzhak will be subordinate to me. So Sorrow saw this, but what was Avram's response? It was very hurtful and evil in the eyes of Avram, because of his son. He thought, he's still my son, and I want my son to be part of my future. You never know what might happen. Who knows what might happen? What in fact did happen, that he was asked to offer up his son, Yitzhak, afterwards. Then only Shmuel would have been left. So, he said, he's my son. How can I drive him out of the house? He said, no, you listen to Sorrow. You've got to be careful. He said, he explained to him, it's true it's your son. I'm going to make him a powerful nation. So anyway, he had to send them out because he followed Hashem. Hashem said, so you've got to follow in this matter. Important. The limit. Although your one is makar of everybody, therefore you feel you should be makar of your own son as well. But no, it's gone, they're going too far. He's going to threaten the future of Yitzchok. And Yitzchok is going to be your main one. And not Yishmael. So drive them out. And when he drove them out, even in fact he took ill, Yishmael <coughs> took ill, couldn't even walk further, mother had to help him to get to somewhere, and there's no more water left, they're both dying of thirst, so they both pray to Hashem, so it says, Vayishma Elohim et kol part of the fulfillment of his name, Yishmael, God will always listen to prayers, prayers even of those whose intention is to kill the people of Israel, he listens to people who pray, and therefore the people come to pray in there, main center of prayer is today the Alaska mosque, the mosque which is in the holiest place. And if there's a threat to that mosque, I think it's a threat to all mosques. And in fact, there have been even suggestions made by very extreme right-wing people who just follow sort of political, even on the, on the verge of madness, they say we've got to, got, to, got, to, got to destroy all the mosques after someone. Because that would be, that would be terrible. Wouldn't it? But that's, they don't follow the toilet, they follow their own, their own instincts. They think this is the only way you'll be able to, to, to deal with them. But this is very dangerous, certainly. And certainly this is not the view of the poskim. We should try our best. If there's, if there's a direct threat to us, let's say when they fire at us from the mosque, then it's another matter. It's a question of who's going to die first, you know, sometimes. 
But if it but still, we have to try to keep the peace. And could recognize that Yerushalayim's strength does not lie on anything, on any material power. It depends on the spiritual power of Klalis. We've got to pray more. And you see, even then, Hashem regards, the Malachim even said to Hashem, how can you save this, this person from dying of thirst? Don't you know that you know that in the future they're going to kill the Jews? Very cruel to them. How can you do it? But Rashi Hashem is still a freedom of choice. You can change. And the truth is, Besof Yamav Yishmael Tit Teshuva. What does what does that indicate? Also, following the same system of the seeds of what's happening today are written in Bereshis that they also they've also got the potential of Teshuva. But we'll bring we can bring them to Teshuva if we will emphasize we're not here for territory we're not here for materialism we're here to become the people of God whom we also worship that's what we have to emphasize and that's the strength of our nation and that's a very important lesson for us today in fact it's brought in such a sharp manner we say the six day war this goes back to the roots of what's happening in Israel the six day war was understood even by the leaders of Israel Rabin and Dayan said, Ze Hayom Asa Hashem Nagilus, they quoted the full Pasuk. When I came here a few years later, and I was here on Yom Hatzmut, and I saw the parade they had at those times, they used to have big parades with tanks and everything, a big banner, Ze Hayom Asa Tzahal Nagilam Niswako. Could there be a bigger Chilu Hashem than that? This is the day in which the army is made, and they made a whole parade of the army. What's happening? And in fact, after the Sixth Day War, there was a certain period, about half a year, there was a spirit of teshuva in the whole world, and also in Israel. And all the mass media, they quoted miracle after miracle that took place. So to even to the extent that in West Point, where they have the highest course on military strategy, and there was a lecturer there who spoke about the last hundred years of brilliant victories of military strategy, he refused to mention, even with a word, the Sixth Day War. And one of the Jews there in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the officer's training, he went up to him, kept on trying to interrupt him, wouldn't take notice of him. Went up to him, tell my aunt to see Matt, why don't you mention the brilliant victory? He said, what do you mean? That's not a military strategy. It, it's a miracle word. It could only come from God himself. Therefore, you can't learn from it. We've got nothing to do with the power of man, and do only with the power of God. The Gentiles recognized it, and the Jews recognized it, and even the leaders of the army and the defense recognized it. But after half a year, it was transformed into the James Bond image of the new Israeli. The intelligence service is above, is the greatest in the world. That's what's all. And the army is certainly the greatest army in the Middle East. And most of the Arabs around. They were in fact in awe. They saw the Jews, they were being favored by God. No, so they, they were being quiet for a time. But then came the Yom Kippur War as a shock because they weren't prepared for it. They thought Israel is so strong we don't have to go into defense. That was the general, general approach. We're not afraid, they have to be afraid of these days. And, and that caused almost 3,000 Jews, innocent Jews, were killed in that war. And uh, since then, it's been a slippery slope of giving back territory, and now who knows what, what, what Israel's going to be forced to give back. I mean, it's, it's reaching a serious state. And it, even the, the most right-wing right politician, when he became prime minister, he swung in the opposite direction, and he even drove our Jews from the, one of the most fertile borderline areas of the land of Israel, which is beautiful, beautifully built up, and was given back so that the Arabs will have an economic blossoming. And even many Jews paid the Arabs to make an economic blossoming. Instead of that, that's the shooting ground to try and kill as many Jews as possible. Other. So this, this is what we're faced with. And now what's going on? I mean, what, so who knows what peace agreement they're going to make? It's, uh, is we're in a very difficult situation. So this is a very important lesson. 
Now, so I say, here Mr. Ephron has in it many teachings. So from this, we'll come to this interesting parallel also. And this, this is one, this, this, we can understand the beginning of the model, it says, Kesa Milona, Kenyan Milona, why use the expression of Kenyan? Why in the second period we can go Ishma Kaddish, and here it's Kenyan. Throughout Shas, in the Mishnahis, and the Gomorrahs, the procedure of marriage is called Kiddushin. Generally not called Kenyan, it's called Kiddushin. That explains the Kasha of the Gomorrah. And the reason it's called Kiddushin, and Makadesh Am Yisrael the Chol Kiddushin, because the Kiddusha of Am Yisrael depends also in marriage. Marriage will never be successful if it's anything but Kocha. It's an aspect of reaching the highest level of Kedusha between man and woman. It's the highest Kedusha. And not only that, we know even the marriage relationship is considered the highest Kedusha in the world. She Hashem, it's Kodesh Kodashim. So it teaches us also our bond with Hashem. And as far as, that's as far as we know everything in the world, it's a Yitzira already says, the three elements. There's Olam, Shana, Venefesh. Olam means the dimension of time. Makom means the dimension of place. And Nefesh means the dimension of person. The Kedusha in person is Kedusha's Kedusha. Kedusha's Nisuhin, Beirusin. The holiness of marriage, that's the highest level of holiness for man and woman. In person. The highest level we know in time, is Kodesh Kodashim, is like Shabbat Shabbaton of Yom Kippur. And the highest position of place is the Beit HaMikdash, the Arabai. And the many aspects, even the Beit HaMikdash, which have to do with the union between man and woman. There were 15 steps that went down from the Esrat Nashim to the, the, from Esrat Nashim to Esrat Esrat Israel, there are 15 steps that go, go down. So this 15 steps is the minimum name of Hashem, Yud Kei. But that's the concept, is individual Beit HaMikdash represents the bond between Am Yisrael and Hashem, which is compared also the bond between man and woman. So there's a close, close aspect of Kedusha in marriage. So therefore, the question arises, why do you use the word Kinyan? We use the word Kinyan because we compare it to the purchase of the Moras Machpela, which demonstrates to us the dedication of Avram Avinu to Sarai, whose marriage founded Am Yisrael, and also because it contained the couples. Adam and Chava were buried there. And then, not only Avram, but Yitzhak and Yaakov also <coughs> were there. Zivu, they both buried there. It's one of the homeless holy places. And that's really the first holy place, even before we had Yerushalayim, long before it belonged to Am Yisrael, the first place. And then, also, there's a very interesting comment on this by the close of Bulgarebi. Because, the, because what do we learn out? We learn out from Kicha, Kicha, Mr. Ephron, the truth is, there, there was Kenyan Kesef, but the Kenyan Kesef, Abba Meret Kesef, Shekel Kesef, Oivel Asochea, it was on a high level of money. That, that was a great, a large amount, a very large amount of money. So, nevertheless, we passed good like Beit Hillel. Beit Shammai say you've got to give something of worth. So Dina Kesef is something of worth. Not nowhere near Abraham made Shekel Kesef. But it's still something that you have to give something of value. But we see that to have, to have a marriage, Paschal Ebe Silo, it's another Pruton to show Pruton. So it says like this. We all hope when we have a Shidduch, and then afterwards we have a Chupit Kiddushin. We have children. Oskim Baturava Mitzvot. That's our main purpose. 
We say what? Well, they also have panosa. But the halacha is like betila. That isha nikne bruta v'shove bruta. And not not like betshama. We say it's got to be dinner, v'shove dinner. And some even learn pshat in this. Some show in betshama say the the amount you have to give. Kesef or shove kesef. When you want to get married, it's got to be something which the average woman will feel is more than just a symbol. That it's something which is worth something. Something bit real. But a pruta is, is worth so little. Amora said somewhere the only thing you could buy with pruta was sometimes some cheap fruit, one, one piece of fruit, or a candle, or a wick that you could buy for pruta. But uh, so it means the pruta is just really symbolic. So Haloch Hilabit Hillel. Hillel was also himself very poor. It's well known. He earned, and he earned a little bit of money, get, gathering together wood. He used a bit of it for a minimum diet and the rest to pay to go and listen to the Shia in the, in the highest Beit Hamidrash. So he learned Torah and he taught at Chak. So there's some people, if they have to give a dinner or something of value, you might find that so many Talmud Chachom who don't have any money really, they won't be able to get married. Ain't not have a kesef. But if all needs to give is a fruit or it, then you can manage. That's why they said, no, you can get married with just a symbolic coin, nothing further, or something equivalent value. So that's why we learned Zayda Shava, Tafka Kich, you missed Ephron. And you are asked, what do you mean? You can save from Ephron, <coughs> where you have to pay such a lot of money. So that proves that Beshama, right? In Beshama, it's make it too, too little. There should have been, if you really learned Zayda Shava, in the school of Nechza, that the album is Sheikh Kesa. Yeah? So it's difficult. So there, therefore they say on the contrary, Ephron even is described as Ra Ayin. He had an evil eye. He was a miser. He tried to squeeze every bit of money out from Avram Avinu. And Chazal even want to say, why did Avram Avinu have to make such, such complex a deal with him? Very complex deal. Because he knew he knew he was a deceiver. And he, he might, might then say, well, you, you, know, you haven't paid enough, you owe me more. So therefore they want to choose, they want to give a remedy here. Only Rasha Kefron or have Kesav or of Kesav. He needs money, money, money. But on the Torah, with one pruta, it's enough for you. Allah Bet Hila, you can become as great as heaven. It's a shame for the for the Bet Hila. Build up your house with the aim to grow in Torah and Yerat Shemaim. And of course have to live, even if you have to live. In the lowly man, you reach the highest level. So I tell and one is to say in connection with this that uh, I read, you know, in England, uh, I th think they understand that the Haredim who live here in Israel are a very important group. Great Britain very much want to make peace. In fact, their former prime minister is head of the peace making group, which, which includes the other countries as well, the other powers, to try and make come to a peace agreement. So he's, he has brought the British ambassador, who's had many meetings with Haredim, and he's very keen on the Haredim, to visit some of these shivas. Matthew Gold, yeah, Matthew Gold. So he's, this, this British ambassador, he, why is he meeting all these people? In fact, he said to himself, because he feels with them it's more easy to come to some form of a peace agreement with the Muslim world and also with the, with the, with the Western world. Cause, cause if, and that's why they, he's keen to get the Haredim, the government. They're behind the scenes, they're trying to do what they can. They can't do very much because it depends ultimately on the vote of the nation. It also depends, by the way, on getting more Haredim to come and live in Israel. If we, if we do that, perhaps that's what Hashem is trying to produce. It, 
if Mohanayim would come here, we'd have a bigger voting power and be able to change things a bit, maybe. Who knows how things work. But, but it's also interesting, you said, one of the things which has impressed him more than anything else is to visit the visit of Yashiv Zatzal. Lives in a small apartment. You can see, these are people, they're not concerned with anything material. Steinemann, who is, who is really, he's a very extreme example of someone whose whole head is in learning, in middle stories, and trying to spread the message of peace to everybody. And also, he, it, in fact, very extreme in fact, you know, he won't have his house painted, things like that. You go to his house, I mean, normal, normal boys, wouldn't use old furniture, He'd get new furniture, new kitchen. But done up, no, he refuses to do it. When people come in and say, why don't you change your furniture? He says, the furniture is good enough. For, we have to change, not the furniture. <laughs> we have to change, that's for sure. So, that's what I'm so when they see these things, they see, here the, these, and they, and they, also the, many, many ambassadors and others, they, they go to pay a visit. Pay visit to them. That's what they, that impresses them. They see these people are not out for anything material to raise the moral and spiritual level of Klaus. So that's a very important message. So now anyway, to come to our main subject. First of all, unless you've got any questions, please. Any comments? Yeah. yeah. How come that Ishmael, uh, he did tshuva, so maybe it could be that HaKadosh Bochu choose him after he did tshuva, that's why they're prospering. Now they control him because maybe HaKadosh Bochu gives them to control, because he made tshuva. And whoever makes tshuva is now good, as uh, maybe Hashem wants them. How can we explain it? Well, uh, on the lines that, that you've hinted at, and which, uh, which are mentioned in all the Midrashim on Parshat Breshis, especially the Ramban extends this quite far, and in the Soya it's extended far, very far. So it's also described in the, in the Nevi'ah. What's going to happen? Ba'achris hayomim. And according to the chat of Ibn Ezra, of the Soya, and of uh, the Babanel and the Malbim, the, 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 war, the world wars. In, if Am Yisrael do the Shuva enough, Milchim et Gov and Magov will finish already. Because it all depends on us in the end, when, when troubles come upon, even upon the nations of the world. But if not, then the final war will be the war which will take place between Yishmuel and also Esau. They, they, they'll have a war one with the other, then one will. They, 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 then, according to many, Ishmael will become the strongest power. They'll make a war against Yerushalayim. And then, they'll either be destroyed, but there'll be many of them which will come back. If you take the Rambam, for example, who describes the power of Islam as being one which is most cruel, despite the fact that certain Muslims who believe in Hashem and they live a moral life, they'll be considered like Bnei Noach, Kosher of Bnei Noach, but there's a, there's, a, there's a trend in the Muslim world of Pere Adam being extremely wild, more than any other group, and they will become very powerful, but in the end, Shmael will do the Shuvah. They're probably the first ones who will recognize the true Mashiach. And they say, Achshek and Achlo Abuteinu, as the Rambam says at the end of Hilkos Melochim, in the uncensored version. Where he speaks about Piat Mashiach, that he will, he'll still have to maybe wage a war against those who don't want to accept the Malchut Hashem, and suddenly they go against it entirely. But it would appear the majority of them will become, as it says in the Kumar of Azor, Kedem, Kurur, and Yisrael. They'll become Kosher of Ben And some of them will become Kedem Tzedek, and others will become Kedem Toshav. Could we say, um, yeah. well, A, um, the aspect of what we're talking now between Ishmael and Adam, it looks like things are pointing towards this, this, this great conflict with 
what's going on in Iraq and ISIS on the one hand, yeah. and what just happened yesterday in the American Senate, where uh, Obama has been transformed into what's known as a lame duck, yeah. uh, and the Senate now, if you like, Edom, uh, reawakening itself and, yeah. and realizing that we're on a, we're on, we're on the front line over here yeah. with with a dangerous power, yeah. and you can see now what. But the, there was a head of the head of ISIS, which back in he was he was in prison when the when the, the U.S. forces were in Iraq, and when Obama pulled out the last troops, they didn't know what to do with him. He was a head rebel, and they just let him go because they didn't have anything to do with him. And he said, "I'll see you guys in New York." That was his that was his words. Um, so we only—I th I guess the only thing we really have is, is prayer um, and tshuva. But how? I mean, how? how what we're going to do with the rest of cholesterol? How's the rest of cholesterol going to do tshuva? That's, that's the, the, the us, begging yeah. question. Well, part of our tshuva is to try and make pali tshuva, bring us to the level where we will influence others. That's the channel that they lose. That's that. On that, the whole fuse depends. Now, for example, now it's becoming even more important because of the Milchokagio, which is a, which is a, could be a terrible, terrible, terrible situation for those who are not committed. And B about the the, the movement for the Arabite. Uh, yeah. Uh, do they have, I mean, so a lot of them are very religious Jews and quite halachically based as well. Uh, it, it, it'd be, I think it would be um, precocious to, to, to assume that these, that they're not following dictates of halacha in any manner. Uh, and the Gadolim, I'm not sure whether they said that it's also that we don't, uh, I haven't researched it, but is it is it blanketly also to go up to our bites or is there some sort of, uh, parameters where it's mutter and it's also no the, it's a, a the the whole matter was already raised almost two hundred years ago in the time of the Trisha Tzion of Tzviyash Kalisha with the Talmud of Cuba Eger. so uh, he brought up this question and uh, there's there are six different things that are necessary before one could the, the go on a certain part of the heart of ice, and many things were left in doubt, but most of the poskim of his time disagreed with him. That's going back 200 years. and that's, but, but there were some poskim who said, in principle, it was permitted apart from any political angles. But um, uh, the, the, certainly in, in, in more recent times, I mean, all the, all the widely accepted Gadolim have Paskans that you're not really supposed to, you, 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 they, I mean, you, you can only go up or even any part of the Harabait if you go to the Mikvah first, even the soldiers that go today, and they have to, plenty of Israeli religious soldiers who are appointed to look after the peace in the Harabait, they, 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 they taught all the din and in certain places you can't go with boots, you can only go with, with, uh, with rubbers, not, not with anything made of leather and so on, the tin barabait, not the makoma mikdash. But to go on the makoma mikdash is only permissible if it's mamash, today certainly everyone agrees, only permissible if it's mamash, a case of direct pikuach nefesh. And the rabbi also, for the sake of defense, which could easily be a question of Pekuach Nefesh, they'd have Tevila first, you know, but also Tevila have to have, get rid of any Tum Yotz and Kufoy. There's still Tomei Mason, but the Tomei Mason, to go on the Mokoma Mikt was a high of Kodos, Stamazo, unless it's Mamish Pekuach Nefesh. And since the borders where the Beit Hamikt is stood out of Sophic, is a Tophic to Arisa. So therefore, and those who try to squeeze a heter, and uh, they think that there are some who think that the fillets will be accepted more there, but they're really basing themselves on many colors, and they certainly today, 
it's as gone of all, all the good old, they're not allowed to go to Chlau because it's so it's certainly a Sophie chorus. Many instances. Ashvat, I give a sure in the And Ashvat, I must say this, whatever Ashvat has said in this matter, and also he's behind and he was behind the Sanhedrin, yeah. the Gadoil totally regarded this, the whole thing in their words, no, but, but he was specific. I asked him <laughs> yeah. asked him an alochic question. Yeah. If that's permissible today to go up there, and yeah. his answer was today because that's the our only way to take over the place. That's the that's her motor. So There's he no must be. Agrees with that. Okay, that's what he's he said. Not, I'm sorry, say no poets agree with that. It's a uh -huh. and there's no poets agree with that. Other other, it says on the contrary, the poskim add to it also, as you said, Beravil Yashiv. Or Rad Yosef also, Rad is the biggest poskim. They say that it's a big sakon. What do you mean? It creates a sakon. It's a provocation. Once you provoke them, they'll come out with with. Uh, in, they don't care. They'll come out like what happened yesterday. I think that's what they come out with. But he doesn't provoke them. There's a din of Naivo. He don't provoke them. Stump. And that's why the Tanya, the Tanya went. On the quiet, it said today in the paper, on the quiet, had a meeting with, with Melach Yadin. Melach Yadin basically been quite supportive, which helped, helped us to survive here in many different ways. The, the king has got his own extremists there also. But, he's, but he said once you touch the Harabite, which is under his auspices, he, he, he withdrew his ambassador. But he said to him, he guarantees there'd be no, really no provocation on the Harabite. That's what he guaranteed. For the for then for hotheads, even if they bring they bring any type of sif from from their perverted understanding of what it says in the poskim, and they go against this. I mean, how can you risk such a thing? How can, how can you risk when he's trying his best? He's, he's trying his best to stop to stop the the hotheads going too far. So, so if we guarantee it, him, he's going to guarantee it. But I don't know what's going to happen now. After, after what happened uh, yesterday. So the question is, he's a person Gadol, Rav Schwarz, and he passed him... He is not a person Gadol. He's not a person Gadol. Just, just well, what makes him call a person Gadol? How do you, you can say it to Rabbi Yashi? He said, it's not a person. What is it? No. In this, in this, in your name, I'll tell you, it all, I spoke to Rav the Chemi also about this. Look, they, at, at the time when they wanted to make this on head and he, he, he's the poison in the Sanhedrin. Who's in the Sanhedrin? In this, that Sanhedrin, he's got people who don't know the Shulchan Aruch. That's Dayonim. Who's Sanhedrin is this? It, it, well, less, the less we talk about it, the better. I thought he would given it up a bit more, but if you think, if you think it's a place to go these matters, it's, uh, it's a bit of a severe question. He said, told you this now, recently? I asked him, yeah, Mr. That you, what, did he think it's all right to go on the Arabai? He said, yeah, but that's uh, one of the only ways to take over the place. That's what he says on his disc. Which disc? On his talks. Talks he uh, gives. He says that? He said it only to you. I think he said it to No, I asked him, I asked him a question. I think it was in the question the Shuri gave about the yeah. subject. And, uh, but it was, on, on, it was on YouTube. Not sure. But it might be. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, so, so we've got a, a little bit of time to go on with the subject of what is Kesser and what is a Pruta. So the important source for this is really the Gemara on that huge base. If you look on, on page 12, you haven't learned that yet. The Gemara discusses what is a pruta, what is its value, it's an eighth of Israel Talki, and how it's related to the dinner. So, um, <coughs> it's clearly the value of the pruta is discussed in monetary terms, in the Gomorrah itself. But what is the pruta? So the Rambam, in, uh, in his commentary on the Mishnah, which you'll find, if you want to look it up, you'll find it at the back of the Gomorrah. You've got Gomorrahs here. 
Yeah. Look at the Perish mission at the back. Perish Mishnah is after the Rosh, before the Masho, in most Kamotas. But so I'll bring it, I'll, I'll just, uh, just so we'll understand it. I'll bring it from the most up to date translation, it's quite important, of the Perish Mishnah of the Rambam. And then, Question is that Beit Shammai say it's a dinner. A dinner is of silver. A dinner was a silver coin. In the time of the Mishnah, which was equivalent to some extent to the silver coins mentioned in the Chumash. In the Chumash it says, what is the shekel? The shekel is Esrim Geiro. The Geiro is what's known as the Mo'o, which is the smallest silver coin in the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, the time when the trade was given. So here the Rambam says that Hadina is Sheish Mo'in. It's equivalent to six Mo'o. So it's like six geiro. That means it's uh, out of the 20 mo'a, which made up the shekel Kodesh, the dinner was six of those. The dinner therefore less than the shekel, the shekel Kodesh. Nitsa mishkalu iso, so the Israel talki turns out to be abo gagarin. It's four barley grains. A fruta, a fruta is half a barley grain of silver. And since a man, if a man says to a woman, he gives her, gives her the, the, the pruta, which is equivalent to a piece of silver, but it's only very small, like half a barley grain, it's very small, then she becomes a kodeshes. But also shove pruta, anything which has a similar value. And, it, and, and the Rashi says, pruta shall nechoshes, pruta made of copper. That means in that time there were no you can't make coins of half a barley grain. The so half a barley grain of actual silver was the equivalent in value of a bruta made of copper. To understand this better, so the Rama describes it in the in in on the Mishnah in Bakhoir, somewhere else. And the reason most of the fortune don't bring this, but it's is this the only way you can really understand? If, where, where does it come from that the smallest element of coinage, or of metal, whatever it is, is half, half a barley grain of silver? What's the origin of that? Why half? What is special about half a barley grain of silver? So, since in the Chumash there's so many definitions of payments, different payments you have to make, so since currency keeps on changing, so what is the standard that exists from the time of the Torah until today? You've got to have some sort of a standard. What is the minimum value? So, the Rama brings in Bukhoyrus, he says that The mission they speak about Pidyon Aben, yeah? How to redeem? You've got to give for redemption of a son, you have to give five shkalim. How do you define the shekel? Today. It says five shkalim in the Chumash. It says like this. We've explained a lot of times the Sela, which is mentioned in the Torah, which is called the shekel. Shekel is also called Hamisha Slaim, so Shekel is Hamisha Shkalim. So we find three names for it. Sela, occasionally, but more regularly Shekel, and quite often it's also called Kesef. Hamishim Kesef, it says. 
from Jesus the scribes, Shkalim. So it says, Hamishim Kesef, or Mea Kesef. There are many dealing where it says, they're like the Moetzi Shem, or Mea Kesef. Kesef, Shkalim, Shkalim, has to be given when a person kills a Canaanite slave. Its, its weight is Chof Dalet Darkamonim. Now Darkamon, this was a coin which existed in the Muslim empire, where, where in Muslim civilization, where the Rambam lived. A Mishka Darkamon is Ted Zayn Gargir. A Darkamon is equivalent to 16 barley grains. The Elohim Gufi Gemara, and this, these are basic concepts in the Gomorrah, they in Safek Bahan. And there's no doubt about it, that everything is ultimately based on barley grains. A Kabbalah Biyadi Me Abba Mori, I have a tradition from my father, which he received from his father and his grandfather, each with the each, Shagagi Azeh, that this little uh, grain, where, or pepper, whatever it is, whereby one does measurements, that is the weight of silver of a gagia sorin. Everything is measured with barley grains. He doesn't know the reason why, but that was taken as the basis of value. Therefore, one sela or one shekel is equivalent to 384 barley grains. And I found that the Weight of Dagamon, the Egyptian one, is 61 barley grain. And that's how he made a parallel between them. He worked it all out. My father told me, that he saw the responsa of the heads of the Babylonian academies, where it was written, and and this was the this conclusion of the Teshuvah. Then it's a fact that this is how it's worked out. So all these things are known by Torah Shabbat Peh, which goes back to the time the Olim, who based it upon the tradition they had from the Amorim and the Tzana'im. So when you come to down to it, this is not different. The Chazun Ish, for example, also discussed this question. He said, maybe the half grain of silver is halachal Moshe Misina. And that's actually what the Rambam says here. It doesn't quote this Rambam. But that's what the Rambam is saying. Just like, how do you know which is the right Esther? And how do you know what the Tfilin should look like? How do we know it? We know it by tradition. It, let's say, today something you find is very interesting. You find excavations that prove it. For example, we found tefillin in the Kopak Koch caves. We found tefillin. Like the tefillin of today. And so, so you, uh, well, how, how can all these things be preserved? There are many things which we. which you, we, 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 we do. <laughs> There are many things that I'm saying in the of the Mishnah that we don't know what they were like, but. They were all shown to Moshe Rabbeinu, what is the right thing. So when it says Kesev in the Chumash, what's the, what's the minimum Kesev? And how do you work out? Because certainly the word Shekel, which is used in the Chumash, is not like Shekel, you Israeli Shekel. We see Shekel has changed in its value and its meaning all the way through. But Shekel originally was made of silver. So therefore this is really the basis of the Rambam for understanding the word of the Pruta. But uh, now to go into this in, in Halacha, what, which, how, how it's to be applied, but to see in the Rishonim, apparently there are three shittas. Some say that the base of Pruta is just common consent. What is the lowest coinage? Which is used for currency. It would appear. And some say it uh, doesn't depend on coinage, it just depends on what people value. What's the consensus of opinion of what people, not what's been used as a currency, as a coin, the minimum coin. But what, whatever people think of values, in which case there's no difference in the case of a case, the same thing. 
because the basis is that's really Hashem Why do you need a positive? For Shavu Kesef. Kesef and Shavu Kesef are the same. 